everyone, my name is Jo and I love to read. Today I'm coming to you with a video all about my 2020 reading stats and also my channel statistics for the year of 2020. So here's another video with my trial wedding makeup on. This is probably going to be the last one that I'll be filming tonight because I'm a bit tired but again I didn't want to waste this. Maybe I will film another one tomorrow morning or maybe not. I feel like I'm going to try the lashes in the future. I've seen like these magnetic lashes that seem really good because can you reuse them? Like I hate the idea of throwing away something again like more waste in the universe is not what I'm a fan of but I'm really enjoying the experience of wearing lashes. They feel like amazing like they just look nice even though I still love my normal natural eyelashes they just nice to give me a bit of a lift sometime for special events it's also going to be a video that's going to be a bit of a comparison between goodreads and storygraph i've decided that i would like to move across to storygraph all the time like 100 percent it's just that I'm waiting for the feature when you're able to make a comment when you do a reading update. I believe that's coming out sometime soon, so I really want that function to come out before I move across because I like being able to... I don't annotate my book, so I like being able to save parts of what I was feeling when I was reading it. I'm going to do my reading stats first, and then I will delve into my booktube channel stats. Let's go to my year in books. Okay. See my year in books. Okay. So we're going to do a bit of a comparison about what stats are what. These are what Goodreads shows you. So my year in books, pages read 8,691, books read 24. My shortest book was Star's Chance, which was 176 pages. And my longest book was The Land of Painted Caves, which is 800 pages. My average book length was 362 pages. The most... Can you hear Cooper? He wants to come in. Enough! The most popular book was The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo with 3,889,743 people shelving and my least popular was Wild Women, Non-Surprise, a non-fiction with 8 people shelving. My average rating was 3.6 stars. The highest rated book on Goodreads that I read was The Search, Avatar The Last Airbender which was 4.54 stars on average which ironically I didn't actually enjoy that book as much as I wanted to because I'd hyped up the answer to this question throughout the whole show for like ever for ages because I've been a fan of Avatar for so long since I was like a teenager for so you could say as a guess at least like 10 years <laughs> I've been living Avatar and I've been hyping up the answer and I only just read it last year and it just wasn't wasn't done as well as I wanted it to be I suppose but I'm sure nothing else could have led up to it. My first review of the year was of The Magician's Guild by Trudy Canavan that I gave four stars to. And then it shows you an overview of all the books that you read, which is always nice. I like seeing the graphic in this way. And then it tells you that my last review of the year was a five-star book, An Ordinary Man by Paul Resusigabinga. Resusiga I can still kind of keep the pronunciation of that name. Yay, go me. So that's all the Goodreads. Now if I go across to the Storygraph and I'm feeling a bit, what is stopping me from Storygraph aside from that feature where I can write comments when I'm doing like a page update but that's not even like a big one. It's more just like I'm not used to the program and I know through like my own experience at work recently we've, we're in the process of changing across our programs that we're using on the computer and it's more just a matter of using it every day like forcing yourself. Like I can feel myself, I have both apps side by side on my phone and I can feel myself going let's update in storygraph but I'm like oh my goodreads is so familiar so it's just one of these things where the more I push myself to do it the better I'll get at it and some days I don't even really need to comment so I would only like to update goodreads very rarely and probably to keep goodreads as a platform because there are more reviews on it than on storygraph from people but I really love the fact that storygraph doesn't have the rating from people and their reviews at the forefront. One of the like biggest downfalls I find of Goodreads for me personally 
is that I'll hear about a book and I'll go to shelve it on Goodreads but then I'll see that like its average rating is like three stars or even like anything under four I'm judging even if it's 3.9 and I just don't want like that opinion overshadowing something that I was thinking was going to be interesting so I'm really looking forward to the story graph because I'll just be able to shelf something without getting other people's opinions of it. Now the story graph is easy to navigate in this respect for me because it is more about graphing being called the story graph and you just go straight to your story graph and then you go to your stats though admittedly it seems like I actually know more about how to navigate this and then you can change your periods like your time periods so I'm going to go back to 2020 and just have a look so there seems a big difference yeah, that's interesting because Goodreads I had read 24 books and 8,000 pages but this one I've only got 20 books and 5,500 pages okay that I'm probably not going to go and correct unless I really feel the need to or I feel like I need something to do because I don't I don't really care but it's really cool to see my moods so mostly I pick adventurous books and then informative emotional mysterious light-hearted tense inspiring funny dark and then sad only one which that that does make a lot of sense to me and it's nice to see it like this and then the pace I pick mostly slow books which is interesting then after that fast books and then medium so that's a bit of a surprise to see why that and then my page numbers normally I pick books less than 300 pages then after that 300 to 499 and then after that 500 pages or more I read mostly fiction and a little bit of non-fiction, which is pretty standard, but it is nice to see that there is some non-fiction in there, which there should be more. And of genres, I mean mostly young adult, then historical, then fantasy, then children's, and mystery on the same, history and biography on the same, and then one thriller, one science fiction, one science, and one memoir. So that's okay. I really, and I'm, I don't, I'm not surprised that young adult is more because, again, reading down a TBR from like ages ago, I'm really not surprised by that. So I'm looking forward to seeing a bit more fantasy come in, but it doesn't, it doesn't really disappoint me or, or make me confused at all. And then the number of books and pages, there's two different graphs and it shows you, so like in January I read one book and then February three books and then two and then three and then two none I finished in June maybe that's where I'm missing some same none in October so on my highest books books month I read three books and on my lowest I read none but that doesn't sound quite right so I'm not sure what happened there and then numbers of pages the most pages I read in April was 1351 so that's interesting too it's cool to be able to see it like this as well and then in my star ratings my average star rating according to the story graph is 3.55 I read one two star book because I normally DNF them if they're going to make it into the realms of two stars. I read nine three star books, eight four star books and two five star books. So that's pretty alright. I would love to see more four star books but I just don't know if that's going to be the reality of the things. So yeah. So those are my different stats for my reading. Another thing that I do like about Storygraph is say if we go to be easier if I just go to the home page. Say if I go to a particular book, let's pick Ellie on my to be read. So this is what it looks like. And again, like I said, it comes up and it tells you the name and who it's by, what kind of categories people put it in, so nonfiction, biography, history. It's emotional, inspiring, sad, slow paced, 270 per blah 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 blah. Gives you a description. Then it does go down into the community stuff, but it's not, it's mainly this at the front that I like, and then we go down to the community stuff. And then it's got different moods from people. So it doesn't look like, you can't actually see, I'm not sure if this is a function just because not many people are on Storygraph, but it looks like you can't see other people's, oh no, hang on, see reviews. Oh, okay, I'm discovering something. See other reviews. Oh, that's really cool. And then you can go only show reviews with written explanations. That's awesome. Oh, that's really cool. 
Okay, I didn't know that existed. So the more that I use it, the more I'm going to find things. And I really like as well, I often forget to include um, trigger warnings with mine. So one of their functions is right at the start, it will ask you like a bunch of questions. And one of them is, does this have any content warnings? So that's really cool. That's really cool. All right, I'm going to stop my screen recording. I think also we've got a YouTube. I don't know. But my computer's suffering. So I'm going to go to YouTube quickly. And I'm just going to have a look at my stats. Just to update you guys on that. And any goals I have with my channel. Okay. So. Just going to look. Over a year. Because. I'm not going to break it down by month. So this year, I got 1.4k views. That's pretty cool. Like, 1,400 views. My watch time is 61.7 hours. And wow, this is amazing to see this metric like this over the year. I gained 38 subscribers. It's amazing. I can't believe that. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. That's fantastic. So at the time of filming this video, I'm sitting at... Oh, it says it right there. 81 subscribers. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the screen recording because I think I'm good now. Channel goals. I don't have very many and I don't have a time limit on it. So my main goal at the moment is just to hit 100 subscribers. At that point, I'm going to do a bit of a, do a giveaway. And I'll probably do it in like when, when I'm announcing the giveaway. Not announcing it. When I'm drawing the giveaway, I'll probably do it as a bit of a live show. If people want to ask any questions that they like, they can. I don't know whether I'll actually have anybody watching the live show though. So that'll just be something I'll do because I feel like having the validity of me drawing out the name in real time so that you guys know whether your entries were counted properly or not. Like I'm not picking the winner. I just think it's a nice thing to do, especially, you know, with the internet and stuff like that. And who knows, maybe I'll get some people that'll come say hello if our time zones ends up working out. But aside from that, my main channel goal this year is to just try and stick to an upload schedule of at least once a week. I've often been a bit like, mm, do I do like on the weekend? Do I do like... I get excited because if my video is edited by Saturday, I want to put it out straight away so that I can look at what people think straight away. But I want to bring some consistency to it. So I'm going to try and set myself a posting deadline of Sunday 10am, which means that tonight, Saturday, I will be editing to get this stuff up <laughs> but that's okay because I have a fairly easy video to edit. I will probably continue to do my reading vlogs because I enjoy them and they will be a bonus video so that'll be once a fortnight on a Wednesday or a Thursday but aside from that it's just the weekly one on a Sunday. I may if I feel like it, if I feel like bulk filming and editing a lot decide to put out another video as well but at the moment I'm just aiming for the one video per week. So that's everything guys. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting my channel this year. I've had a really fun time getting back to it and I think I'm making some more friends and connections with people which is really fantastic. Thanks for continuing to support me and don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed looking at the stats in comparison. I'm sure it would be nice to do a bit more of a comparison between Goodreads and Storygraph or just a Storygraph gush when I've used it a bit more later on. It's a bit hard at the moment because I haven't finished a book this year so I haven't had a chance to review anything. So that will be happening soon hopefully and then I can check out the review functioning a lot. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below of Storygraph. Have you been using it for ages? Are you a convert or are you not sure? Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you guys again in my next video. Bye.